Hey, what's up everybody? Adam Manis here, and today I'm talking about three jazz chords for beginners. Now these three beginner chords come straight from my new course, Jazz Chords from Beginners. Check the description for a link to that course below, and there'll also be a PDF there of the material from this lesson, and let's get into it, shall we? Now, I wanted to pick three chords that are just the most basic foundational chords that every jazz pianist should know. These will go uh, far in helping you to learn jazz standards or really any tune that has any kind of seventh chords or extensions. So we're just gonna do the basics here today. Major seven, minor seven, and dominant seven. And we're gonna talk about how they're formed, kind of the theory behind them a little bit, the extensions, how to use them, and then at the end we'll do a basic chord progression so you can see how they function together with voice leading and uh, all the good sounding bits there. All right, let's get straight into it. The first chord is the major seven chord. Now this chord in the key of C is built around four notes, C, E the third, G the fifth, and B the seventh. Now this is the basic chord. Uh, but even this is more than we need to define this chord. We really only need the root, the third E, and the seven B. All three chords that we're learning today are really based on these three notes. These define the entire chord. And the third and the seventh are often referred to as the shell. And they determine whether it's major, major seven, or dominant seven, or minor. Right? So this basic major seven chord has a major third, and a major seven. Again, the full chord, C, E, G, B. Now, jazz musicians love to add extensions to these chords. So extensions are just uh, keep going up by skipping a note. So from the B, we skip the next note, and we go to D, that's the nine. And from the D, we skip a note, and we go to F, that's the 11. And from there, we skip a note, and we go to A, that's the 13. And then if you skipped another note, you're back at the root. Now. We often do not play this natural 11 on a major seven chord. That's a note that we usually avoid in the chord voicing. So the extensions that are really available to you for this chord are the nine, which is D, and the 13, which is A. So that's really the full breadth of what's available for a major seven chord. Now we still call it a major seven chord even though you're using a nine or a 13. You could uh, spell it as major 13, you see that all the time. But really, when you see major seven, the nine and the 13 are almost always fair game to play. Okay, so now we have our extensions, right? We're gonna omit that 11th on major chords because it doesn't sound great in the natural 11. Uh, what are some voicings we can use? Well, we know about inversions, right? Where we take the same notes and we can move them around so they sound better than just stacking notes on top of each other. Uh, a basic voicing for a major seven chord is this. It's lovely, isn't it? That's C the root, E the third, B the seventh, right? There's our root and our shell right there. That defines the chord. And then we have two other notes, the nine, which is D, and then we put that fifth back in there, G. It's a pretty standard voicing for a major seven chord, right? So that's our level one, major seven. It's actually, you could spell it a C major nine because it has that nine in there. You could put the A in there sounds just fine then that could be spelled the C major 13 but if you see C major 7 this is what you can play and just a bit on chord symbols sometimes you'll see C M A J 7 sometimes you'll see C capital M 7 which I don't like sometimes you'll see C triangle 7 which I do like because it's just easy to see uh, you see it immediately oh that's a triangle that's major that's the one I prefer so that's what I have here today so here's our first chord C major 7 all right our next chord is the minor 7 uh, in C, we're going to base this off of the second degree. So if here's our major seven again, C, E, G, B, if we move this up one scale tone, all on white keys because it's the C major scale, we get this D minor seven based off the Dorian scale. Again, all white keys starting on D. And just like with the C, if we skip a note, we get this chord and it's a minor seven, D, F, A, C. Uh, now it's a minor seven because the third is a minor third, right? The D to the F is only three semitones away as opposed to F sharp, which would be a major third. You can hear the difference between major and minor there. And we have the fifth and then we have a minor seven, right? So if this were the key of D, that C would be sharp. But because we're in the key of C and we're one scale degree up, that C is natural, of course. So that's a minor seven. 
right? Got a minor sound, got that flat seven there. All right, now the extensions for this work just the same way. From this top note, C, we skip a note, we go up to the nine of D, which is E. We skip another note, go up to the 11, which is G, which sounds great on minor sevens, by the way, the natural 11. Skip another note and go up to the B, which is the 13. Also sounds great. All of the extensions on minor sevens on this Dorian sound are in play. So while the major chord, you'd probably want to omit that natural 11th most of the time, for a minor chord like this, all three of the extensions, the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th, sound great and can be added to your voicing. Um, when you see a minor 7 voicing, and when they spell minor 7, you'll usually see a lowercase m and a 7, or maybe a minus sign and a 7. When you see that, most of the time, any of those extensions, the 9th and 11th and the 13th are in play. The 13th is a little trickier, but definitely the 9th and the 11th almost always sound good. Okay, so what's a common voicing we can use? Well, I like this voicing. Often called the so what voicing, because you hear a lot in Miles Davis's so what. This we have D, which is the root, of course. We have G, which is the 11th. We have C, which is the 7th. F, which is the 3rd. And then that 5th on top. It's a beautiful voicing. It's got a nice stack of 4ths here. And then a, a major 3rd on top of that. And it has all of the crucial elements of our minor 7 chord. Our root, our shell, which is the 3rd and the 7th. It's got our 11th, which is one of the extensions. And it's got the 5th in there. Beautiful voicing. Okay, our last chord is the dominant seventh chord. Now this chord acts as a, a way to get from, uh, it's like a cadence from five to one. So we'll start on the five of C here, that's G7. We have G, we skip a note to B, skip another note to D, skip another note to F. Now this is like a combination of the previous two chords. It has a major third, right? Not a minor third, but it has a dominant seven right? Not a major seven. I hear the difference between those two. So our C major seven had a major third and a major seven. Our D minor seven had a minor third and a minor th seven. And our G dominant seven has a major third and a minor seven, right? It's, uh, it's the best of both worlds, as it, may, as it were. So this chord you often hear going towards the one. That's how it's most often used. It's no different in jazz. Uh, and just like the other chords, we can use the extensions. Once we are past the seventh, we skip a note and we go up to the A, which is the ninth of G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Skip another note and go to the eleventh. Skip another note and go to the thirteenth. Now, just like the major seven chord, the natural eleventh on the dominant chord is often omitted as an option for adding extensions to it. So we'll often leave out that C as an option for voicing this chord. But the ninth A and the 13th E are still in play. Just like with the C major seven, the ninth D and the 13th A were still in play with this G seven, those extensions sound great. Okay, so what's a common voicing for this? Well, this is a great one. I've got the root, I've got the seventh F, I've got the third B, I've got the 13th E, and I've got the ninth A. All the nice extensions, got the root, got the shell, right? Something really cool with dominant chords uh, that might be a little advanced for this beginner video, but hey, it's never too early to start thinking ahead, uh, is that you can alter the extension. So the extensions, the ninth and the 13th, those two notes can be altered, and even the 11th, but we're not there yet. Uh, so for this voicing that we have here with the 13th and 9th on top, we can actually flat these notes to get kind of a darker tone, right? Think about it like a darker shade of a color. If this chord sounds blue, this is just a little bit darker shade of blue. It's still blue. It's still a G7, but it has those altered extensions. In this case, the flat 13 and the flat 9. All right, now I added those extensions in uh, flatted like that because when we combine these three chords, those flatted extensions make for some great voice leading. Now, voice leading is when the voices of a chord lead somewhere in a logical manner. And there's all sorts of rules for counterpoint from classical music that we can get into. But today, just know that it sounds great when voice leading is good. And if we use these three voicings 
in a common chord progression in jazz called a 2-5-1, which is D minor, G7, and C major 7, then we get that great voice leading where that top note A goes down in half steps, right? So here's our two based off of C, right? The D minor starts on the second degree of C, the five, which is G from C, and the one. And these are the same voicings we've learned for each chord. And listen to that top note. Classic. That's a classic, classic chord progression and classic set of voicings for playing that two, five, one chord progressions. All right, that's it for three jazz chords for beginners. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see today. Uh, we've got tons of tutorials on our YouTube channel. And then check the description for uh, links to the new course, uh, Jazz Chords for Beginners. And until next time, happy practicing.